What's going on? I am the one, the only, the W-O-O-K-I-E. Thank you for everyone joining us in the chat. Welcome to the New Larkana podcast. Uh, I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, oh, sorry. The, the Keyforge. Keyforge. We're just, we're prepping for what happens next. But we got, we got everybody, at least from last week, we got Big Z. What's up, Z? Hey, how's it going? And of course, the Ewokiest of Ewoks, Ewok Jr. Hello, Keyforge community. Glad to be here. He's been dying all week to say that. I have, and, and I have people who have recognized that and even say it when we're playing games. It's great. Do people people oh, sit down great. across from you and go, hello, Keyforge community? Yeah, even when they, we start off on uh, DMs. It's great. Really? Wait, yep. when you, you just said playing games, what game are you playing? Or well, I did. I did have no, no. no I, I did have my ABR match this week, and oh, okay, you know, other you games. But uh, there have been some people on TCO that have recognized it. No, oh, nice, right on. Um, got a little bit. We said we we're going to go over some rules today. We are going to go over some rules today. Uh, but first, we want to talk about Gamma. What does Gamma stand for, anyway? Something, 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 something. Gaming. Nobody knows. I thought it was. Uh, game and manufacturers association, but I I need to check that one. Uh, um, oh, it's definitely not the uh, general aviation manufacturers association. Yeah, G- game manufacturers association okay. is what immediately popped up. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Gamma big convention. I don't know where it is. Uh, basically, that's where a lot of your game stores go to, right, to see the new product, see what's coming out. Yeah, they were um, in Reno. They were in Reno, Nevada. Wookie. Oh, this Re- is it always in Reno, or does it float? I don't know. It's so a little blurb that immediately pops up. Uh, Game Manufacturers Association, nonprofit trade association, based in Columbus, Ohio. But it says for this year, you can see the dates, and that's Reno. Um, okay. And I have that heard that from multiple other sources this week too. I've never been to Gamma. I know people that have gone to Gamma, but I, I don't know much about it. Um, if you remember when Keyforge first started, they were handing out the Gamma decks, which all sucked. Um, every last one of them were horrible. So, uh, well, maybe not every last. I've never seen a good Gamma deck. But, he does uh, not know this. This is not fact-checked. This is not fact-checked at all. But uh, no. I've never sat across the table from a Gamma deck. They didn't print that many of them. So odds no. are they do all suck, but we do not know this for certain. But uh, kind of the big thing is, and I don't know if this is controversial or not, uh, but uh, Mark, Mark H. posted a photo into our Discord today uh, showing out that they're giving out uh, Unchained and Winds of Exchange decks. You guys, I mean, I are you guys upset about this? I Why know a few would that people, be controversial? Well, you know, there's that. Li- Who the heck would want Winds of Exchange decks right now? I don't know. Like, I heard about this GameFound thing that they launched, and, like, oh, man, it was kind of like a little bit of a nightmare, and there was a huge setback. Well, it wasn't a setback, but they were right on time, right? And and now people who have put yeah, money towards... Yeah, last I heard, they are 100% on time. Yeah, I mean, and now now people who have put money to get these, you know, Unchained and Worlds of uh, Winds of Exchange decks aren't getting them, and they're getting handed out to people who didn't put money towards. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I know so I, some people I know, are upset. Yeah, I know some people are upset because you have decks that were passed out before people from GameFound got it. But to be honest, Gamma is set up for I- individuals in the gaming industry. So these are store owners. These are people who are game store employees. And frankly, that's who we have to get this in the hands of right now. We need to make sure that they're aware, hey, this game is not dead. Uh, there, there are decks. We have a new set coming out. Here's what you can look for. Here's our new company. Um, so this does not bother me at all. I mean, again, we have news that it is coming to us by the end of May. And with May 1st being on Monday um, from this recording, this news to me, timing, I want to see that they are getting it out to any game store employees. Because frankly, the longer that we sit here with it just in our hands as game found uh, people or individuals who went to KFC, um, Keyforge Celebration, less individuals in game stores know about it and it's longer for OP. So right now, yes, I want my decks, but as Sheep has said, you can give me all the decks. If I don't have anywhere to play them, it means nothing. So What's OP? Talk- 
That's why we're talking. Oh, okay. so o- 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 OP. Th- those are letters that are uh, they're they're four letter words right now. L M N O P. It's not a real four letter word, but it, it is something that is sour for a number of individuals. And so I think this is a great move that they're reaching out to gaming individuals, store owners, store employees, and saying, "Here, try this out. Check it out." Um, to be honest, it was not even on the radar for all of my uh, my listening ears. Um, there's, I don't there's think quite it was a bit on the radar process. for a lot of people, unfortunately. Yeah. The, the talk of the town right now is... The mouse. The mouse. The house of it, mouse. It's, it's Lorcana. It's Din Djarin. So, Can I get a Grogu card in the first set? That's what I want to know. No. No? Do they say no uh, straight up? No Star Wars? No, no, I mean, it, it has nothing's been released in that manner yet. But right. it, but what we need is because people are like, hey, Lorcana is very, very similar to Keyforge with this race. We could take advantage of that and be able to connect. And I think there's just a lot of excitement. New new game that's coming out. You have Ravensburg, which is a pretty very, very solid, well-established game company. But People are not comparing it to Keyforge. Keyforge is not even an afterthought of an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime I, I'm fine seeing Unchained decks and our Woe decks or Winds of Exchange decks, and hopefully it sparks a few more people, and hopefully we can hear something new soon in regards to OP so that we can play those amazing decks. And we'll probably, I don't know, I don't want to say next week we'll be talking about it, but Lorcana has a, a pretty interesting OP system. Um, that we're we're gonna talk about um, at a future date, because uh, right now, I mean, we're I guess we're kind of behind, but does it really matter when news is so slow? Uh, we did get new rules. Uh, two of the biggest new rules I think all of us wanted to talk about last week, uh, but didn't get the opportunity to talk about it was uh, the new discard uh, mechanic and the scrap keyword from Grim Reminders. So. I'm not really sure where to go with it. Obviously, the discard mechanic, there's going to be a new pip on your cards. It's going to be a purple minus card. Uh So instead of drawing, you will be discarding a card. Um, And then the scrap mechanics, I don't, I'm a little confused on the scrap mechanic, but probably we'll find out more once Grim Reminders comes out because the scrap mechanic is basically allowing you to use said card that you discard which i guess is well, probably going to be a way figured of... out we got a walk bot here yeah walk so bot. what does scrap say well I- i'm gonna first go back uh for your discard bonus icon that means that you're gonna see pip similar to mm carrying through um this is popping up with kind of that purple it looks like honestly a purple icon purple. Uh, like a card but it has a little arrow so i can subtraction signal yeah, that's, but that's I mean nice. that I can but the iconography is easy enough to understand. So I like this. I like it's built in. Um there's some hypothesizing going on that you know you could see it for our next set for Grim Miners. There's also some hypothesis that uh maybe it shows up in some anomalies because mm-hmm. we see cards early. And there's even some other individuals who are going ahead and putting forward that you could see it in our newest Keyforge adventure. So all three are definitely Chota Hattery's Key. What is it? Chota Hattery's <laughs> Chota Hattery's Great Keyscape. Great it's Keyscape. Coming. That's what it is. It's this coming. Christmas. This, this Christmas. I'm sorry. This this winter holiday season yes. is coming. And sign up for the game phone. So, <laughs> joking aside, uh, all three are options to be able to see um, this new mechanic implemented in use and. I, I like it. I, I like the simple aspect. I like seeing a new um, icon, and I'm excited to be able to see what it offers for play. And then your other one you're talking about is Scrap. Mm-hmm. So Scrap has a little bit more, and it says, after a card with a Scrap ability is discarded from a player's hand, the active player resolve the card's Scrap ability. Scrap abilities can resolve in the discard pile. So that's an interesting little component there. If multiple cards with scrap abilities are discarded simultaneously, they are resolved one at a time in the order of the active player's choosing. Mm -hmm. If an ability discards a card from a zone other than a player's hand, any scrap abilities on the card do not resolve. So it basically needs to be coming from hand. What do you guys think about this? I I think think the combination of the two was super fun because like, you could obviously get 
for say like a discard icon on some cards and perhaps two on one card and then you can play it resolve the two discard icons onto two off house cards that have scrap abilities and then like you get your full effect of the card you just played you discard two off hands to increase your efficiency and then you get the scrap effect from them too so that's a very unique um unseen play space like a new like they basically with these two combined can uh new mechanics they're making up a whole new design space that the game never had before because we've all seen like discard off house we've seen discard archive um there's been uh we've seen discard steel from the ee um i think this is a very new way to approach like the discarding effects which is net gain as far as like efficiency for keyboard plus a bonus and I will say, uh, Roger Schrubber had posted a number of cards here that already will interact with this. So Toxin, Mind Bar, Mind Fire, uh, PE or Punctuated Equilibrium, Double Doom, Dendrix, A Vinda, Subtle Auto, Subtle Chain, Subtle Maul, and then Sink or Swim. Mm-hmm. Um, frankly, only PE is what is going to go ahead and hit all of your cards in hand at once. Mm-hmm. And so I-, I like that it's filling a new space. Honestly, I hadn't seen it. It fits in really well, but I'm not worried about other cards having a major impact on this new ability. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Punk was the big one that first came to mind for me. Because if I punk and I got a, you know, I don't want to say a mitt full of scrap because I don't know how pluff, you know, plethoral the the, the punks that that (laughs) plethoral, I don't know how much they're going to have scrap in the set. Prevalent? How prevalent they'll be? Let's go with prevalent. I don't want to say prevalent, but whatever okay uh, do you want the word how often how often <laughs> i do i love that word that's, that's prevalent Pre- prevalent <laughs> whatever either way <laughs> long story short right how, how yep. much is scrap going to be in the set that that is a big because punk is a thing that some top end decks have um, mm-hmm. I am going to be able to now trigger cards from my hand on my opponent's turn, which no, I no, think no. is big. No, not this exactly. Is, no. Well, yeah, he... yeah. No? I'm gonna read. I'm gonna reread this again. Um, if an ability discards a card from a zone other than the player's hand, any scrap abilities on the card do not resolve. Okay, so that doesn't change anything. But look here: if multiple cards with scrap abilities are discarded simultaneously, they resolve one at a time in the order of the. Active, active players, players choosing. choosing correct so again that would be the person who played punk which means sure, that yeah. you don't have active the players making all decisions with yeah. those cards oh is and it a so, may resolve they Af- are after a card with scrap the- ability is discarded from a player's hand the active player resolves the card's scrap ability yep scrap abilities can be resolved from the discard pile okay yeah so you have you have let's just say let's let's make this easy um, you have made me to just whatever you made me discard a card from my hand at random, right? Yeah, yeah it has the scrap uh, it, ability. You have on made it. me. I you have, get to choose it, right? You get to choose it, but like it's not just it just it still fires. It's not just yeah. it doesn't just fizzle. Yeah, we also don't know what the scrap abilities are. Yeah, true, it could be like gain an amber, capture an amber onto a creature. Like right. all of these are easy choices that you can make. <laughs> For your opponent, right? Like you choose which amber you, which of the creatures your amber has to go on, right? Like that's what we're. Like, it, I don't think it, it could would also be say a mistake to make destroy them very, all cre- very destroy all creatures on board. Yeah, that would be. I mean, it, it could. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I, we don't know. It's very unknown. I mean, that scrap could become very powerful. Nobody knows. Yeah. I mean, we do. We, we we know that. Grim Reminders, for the most part, was designed by FFG. And that FFG has a hard time balancing things sometimes. I mean, I'm I saying that they added this new that. key term because they wanted to scrap the game? No, I'm saying that they sometimes... Too, like Too soon, too soon. Okay. Too soon, too soon. I'm going to back myself sometimes up. Sometimes Pips, like we thought Pip, like we knew Pips was going to be huge, but there was a lot of other people, <coughs> Ewok, they didn't think pips were going to play a big part in the game. But I stand. I'm raising my hand. I was completely wrong. But you weren't alone, st- was my thing. No, you weren't I, alone I in that. I wasn't alone, but I will say, I really don't like 
the vanilla creatures in MM. Um, they do bring a lot of additional value, though, with those pips. So right. I-, I was wrong. But, there you with go. Ca- but with scrap could be like super powerful, like scrap gain three ember. You know what I mean? It, like, we don't know. And this is just yeah, me we, spitballing. We just have to wait and see. But um, I mean, I'm st- I am still resolving cards from my hand on your turn. Which I mean, even if it is gain an ember, so I go from five to six, so I go from not forging a key to forging a key. It could play a big role. I'm just saying. There's some. There's I think it's a little things. early to know what is happening. There's just going to be a new ability. You you don't like theory crafting at all, do you? We theory craft, theory craft a lot because there's not much else to do I here, but love, we theory craft a lot. I love talking shit. That's the best. I just don't know if it's going to be as big of a deal as you think it is. It, like, it, it, there it are might be nothing. Triggers that on your side already, because there are creatures with destroyed Right, they're effects. destroyed effects. And, yeah, like that's that's already a thing as long as they're intelligently designing, because like they have full reins on what they decide to do no matter how much FFG did. like This is true. They can I mean, redo everything if they yeah. wanted to. Um, I'm just saying this so, could yeah. throw some crazy wackiness into the game that could be quite exciting. I mean, I'm all for the wackiness. I think yeah, things would be more exciting this. that way, but I also don't think they're going to go and do some, like, really... Like, I think something that would be bad on a scrap card would be, like, an inspiration type effect, like, ready and use a creature. Like, that would be super stupid, right? Like, because then if your opponent discards it, they would then have to choose a creature on the other side of the board to ready and use. Like, that gets to the point where there's going to be a lot of overlapping, like, rules entanglements that are going to happen because of that. And that would be a really bad idea, right? So as long as they stay away from, like, that level of complexity on scrap, I think we're fine. Like I expect to see gain and like I expect to see like your most basic types of like card interactions on scrap and nothing more cuz like they don't want it to be better than playing the card, right? Scrap like, destroy an artifact. There goes your auto encoder. I don't know. I'm just I'm having fun with it. Yeah, that. but like if your opponent did that to you, they would get to pick, then they would choose your artifact. Um, good right? question. Like that's what we're talking about. Like that's well, it's my card, so I don't think, you know, if it's You don't says get to enemy, make decisions on their turn. So like This is true. I them. don't get to make a decision on their turn, but I'm, I'm assuming yeah. auto encoder is the only the yes, only Yes, in the case it's the only artifact, but that they could be the only artifact on either side. True. <laughs> I don't know. So. I mean, like I said, just spitballing, having some fun with it. I like the level of wackiness yeah. it could put into it. Um, and we'll see if it actually does or not. So, but like on like to to hammer that home, like I think destroy the artifact would actually be a fine scrap effect. I don't think they're gonna get that compl- complicated, uh, to be honest. But I still think that's fine. Like that is a very quick, maneuverable decision. You just pick one; it's gone. Doesn't matter. Sometimes it's gonna be bad for the person who had the scrap card. Sometimes it'll be good for them, depending on who has artifacts and player what they are. I mean, because clearly like, it's designed to do some house cheating, right? You're gonna play a card that has yeah. a that has a has a, uh, a discard icon, and you're gonna discard it from your hand. That's an off house, hopefully, mm-hmm. um, that allows you to do a thing, right? Yes, but I, that I, sounds like the goal. Yeah, that the wackiness can pursue because punk is a real thing and it is very prevalent. And I don't, then, like, I don't really know. Maybe also if any see some there. creatures that have like reap discard a card like we used to, like um. Like all the bots. Yeah, right? the bots. Yeah, like all of those. Like that's that would be very much in line with scrap. Like like we we don't know what we're gonna see. So like that would all be very cool as long as they don't get like really stupid with the scrap effects to create odd interactions when your opponent. I hope very they rare. don't. I hope very they rare. Don't. I hope but occasionally they, just go they do discard stuff. I I really hope we're stupid. You know you know me. I, the crazier the better. I I do. The crazier, the better. But um, also new rules. Um, We're going to go through. Do you want to go through versatility and treachery first? Because those are kind of our new keywords. Let's use them. So walk bot. 
All right, let's start. You want versatile? So versatile, if a card has the versatile keyword, it can be used as if it belonged to the active house. Which we've seen this before. There are lots of that say this, you know, this creature belongs to any house. So this is just to save text, right? Because right. there's like, like this is what Mantle from set one does. Yep. Um, Mac the Knife from set one. Well, but so they had it. Just the they had it. It, sa it saves. Yes, it saves text. Um, it also allows, because some of those, if I'm correct, Mac has Omni ability. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I got to go check. I believe But like. Is. But that limits, I guess, what it can do. So having versatile... No, Mac has an action. No, Mac just has an action. Ability, an action, yeah. okay. Cause, cause but he, he belongs to any like, Because he is a versatile creature, basically. Yeah. Correct. But I'm saying you could, like, with versatile now here, if it had replaced the term or the information for Mac, it would allow you to reap instead of just choosing his action. So it, it, it brings a little you bit more... Can reap with Mac. Mac. Yeah, I was saying Mac can reap. If he chooses, yeah, Mac is exactly the wording you just he is, read. He is versatile. It is just now they have a keyword. They have it as that keyword. instead of writing it all out. And then treachery is. Do, 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 do. Okay, so oh. treachery. When a card, no, I got it. when a card has the treachery keyword, it enters play under the control of your opponents. So related topics, control and ownership enters play. So. We've seen so the keyword too. for Scowly and the yep. new one in Woe, the one that like you play a creature from their hand, they get the card you're playing. I don't know its name. It's a uh, it's a Equidon. Um, the one is that the one action? No, no, it's a creature. It's a two power creature. Yeah, you get an Equidon. amber. They get the creature. You look at their hand. You play a creature from their hand. Ah, uh, yes, it. yes, yes, yes. I. I can't remember I what he's what called. What it does, I do not know. That, it's an Equidon creature, so it's probably a stupid name. So we've talked with him. We've talked about him before. Yeah, he's, um, he's pretty good. Yeah, we like him. Um, I thought and he was... also is versatile, or he would be. If was there really not existed. also a? Maybe I'm wrong on this. I thought they made a keyword for enters play ready too. They don't have a keyword no. for that. No, they didn't that make a keyword for that. No. I thought they had no. made a keyword we, for we that. We don't have no. um what is it, rage or whatever yet. You weren't talking about know. Talent Scout in Equidon. Talent, Talent Scout was who we were talking about, yes. Okay, so yep. Talent Scout two power get Rukian uh creature with an amber pip. Talent Scout enter uh may be used as if it belonged to the active house. So that's what you're talking about as versatile. Play, look at your opponent's hand and play a creature from it as if it were yours. Your opponent takes control of Talent Scout. Yep. Yeah, kind of so they get a versatile versus. creature. Yeah. You get an amber and get to steal one of their creatures. So overall, pretty good card. But yeah, that is in the future. We won't see all that text. We'll see versatile. Yep. Right. Which I guess they. But I wonder if you'll see that have, text. They must have recently done that though, because like, or else we would have seen it in the Woe card talent scout. So I guess this is something more to like. I, that'd be something to be on the lookout for Grim Reminders just to see if we see more versatile creatures. Yeah, I think it clears it up for terminology it, because all of those keywords are something that you can look at in the back of the rule book. So instead of it just being on a card trying to figure it out, I like that it's clearing it up. Um, and I pulled up Mac the Knife because apparently my brain is not working. Shadows, three power, elf thief creature with elusive. You may use Mac the Knife as if it belonged to the active house, which would be your versatile action. Deal one to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, gain one. Yeah, he's a secret so, needle. Yes. Um, but because it says you may use it as if it belonged, you can have the action right. or the reap or the right. fight. Yep. But my yeah, I, my question was, are we going to see more creatures like this now that they've stamped it with a keyword, which Z had already brought up? Because, I mean, I would like more at, enter play ready creatures. That'd be great. Um, I don't know what that'd do for the game, but uh, you're saying awesome. enters. Play I don't like ready? Karim as much as about the, the creatures, but like I was thinking about this the other day, like because I was talking about someone about the overall utility of artifacts as far as like which ones are good, which ones are bad. And a lot of it's because like. <laughs> They come in exhausted. Like, I think I would have loved it so much more had just all artifacts come in ready. Like, and you were able to use like, them the same oh, turn. 
Yeah, like there would have been a lot easier like valuation of them because like a lot of these artifacts just don't do anything if you get them in the bottom of the cycle. And some of them are like theoretically really good ones that just don't mm-hmm. do anything later. Like <laughs> I think that is something I would have loved to have seen. JM um, says so artifacts it, come in ready in Larkana. Shut up. God <laughs> <dang> <laughs> well, look at that. Um, I guess I'm going to Larkana. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, um, I, I mean, b- back in the day, that would have been horrible. Uh, could you imagine LA loops? If you could also then play, play your Nepseed and then use your Nepseed. You still, that's not the same turn. Cause you're not playing LA on your untamed turn. Well, r- well, but hold on. You forgot. I was, you, you could phase shift to play a Nepseed and then it came in ready and then you could pop it right that's away. That's still a pretty big loss of value overall. Yeah. Then you're phase shifting, which is your draw power, like so. I'm phase shifting, two. drawing a card, yeah. pop. I guess, but still, it uh, it was a possibility. Yeah. Like, overall, though, like I think there, like that is an area which I, I like. We we started to see one in the uh, in the in woe. There's a, I think it's the MK2 generator, or whatever. It's an artifact that just comes in ready. Like, yep. like if they just had more of those in general moving forward, like I think that whole design space of artifacts being a little bit better than they are um, would be good. Like the stuff like Library of Babel. Card sucks, but if it came in ready, it would suck a little bit less because at yeah. least it replaced itself in the draw at that moment in time. Like like there's a lot of artifacts like that too. Like even like nothing's going to redeem Soul Fiddle, but it would be a little less hella bad if it had come in ready or like You're the Wretched use Doll. Soul fill- no, both of those are horrible. They should not exist. And they are. They're just really But they bad. still, like, even, like, even the Wretched Doll, almost as bad as Soul Fiddle. Like, all of these drastically get better in value if they just come in ready. Because just the number of turns you play a house. Like, on average, you play a house three to five times a game. Yep. So, like, if you're not getting the use out of it, the turn you play it, like, the odds that you see it, if it's late in cycle, actually get used is very, very small. Yeah, and for uh, those who are curious, MK2 generator, Mars token, uh, sorry, Mars artifact that is an item in Woe, and it says MK2 generator enters play ready, action, make a token creature. So, no, I agree with you. I, I like that aspect. What about the Scully Caper aspect? Do you guys like seeing Scully Caper, which I, I can go ahead and read, two power, elf thief, uh, creature in shadows. Um, I don't really care about the skirmish, uh, it, is, it is interesting here, but Scully Caper enters play under your opponent's control and can be used if it belongs to any house. At the end of your turn, destroy one of Scully Caper's neighbors. I, I'm more looking at that destroying neighbors. Do you guys like that or no? I thought it was a fun card. Um, I did help me in some sealed play a long time ago. Overall, I mean, I think it's a fine card. Um, the only issue I have with cards like that is like they get shuffled into your opponent's deck at the end of the game. Happens yes, all the time. They, yes, they do. Happens with the quadricorders. Like, like that's. I love the like. I love quadricorder. I love Scally Caper. Like, I like all those cards. But like, my only knock on them is a very like meta <laughs> knock. As in, like in reality, that's how you lose cards. Like, it's it's not <laughs> that you actually like fumbled them out of your case or whatever. It is and, and your true opponent story. walked away with it true story if you borrow a deck and you attach that quadricorder or an upgrade on your opponent who has sleeves that are identical to you it becomes uh-huh. very very difficult and here's your lesson of the day boys and girls count your number of cards when you're done yep every time i do well. because uh, they can disappear pretty quickly and then people have heart attacks when you go to return that deck and it doesn't have the right amount of cards especially if it's like you know 500 i'm just i'm just throwing out there i don't know where that would have come from but it's a lesson learned i I think i saw it at you know the vault or kfc or some some kind of something something, something, yeah i mean just just saying it happens don't get snack lifted there was signs made about it just you know count your stuff get your cards back um all right what do we got next okay new band and restricted list um again i don't think there was any real surprises here um cards that were not on this list before 
uh, Control the I Week. Wasn't that was on the surprised list? about an omission to it, not in like any of the well. Ads. Okay, because I, I think I have an omission too, so I want to hear this. But well, okay, so the cards I, added Control, Control the, week, the Week, Scrambler not, Storm, yeah. Scrambler Storm, and Stealth Mode. Yeah, Boom, so Stealth Mode, Scrambler Storm, and Control the Week were all added. I but also they, have an omission that I was like, huh, surprised not to see that there. And Lateral Shift was removed. I, honestly, I wasn't seeing Lateral Shift as a major issue. I wasn't seeing a ton of play that KFC. All that anomalies seen, but... are so dang rare. I don't think yeah. they needed to be on here. But right. for whatever reason, Ghost Form is there. I still don't understand why it's there. I could care that less double about ghost that form deck competitively ever. Like, well, people were worried yeah. about it with Eddie. Candle, I, 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 I don't you know. You could still have Eddie in ghost form because you could have ghost form in five Eddies. Like, that's still okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't so know. So, like, I don't like if I looked at the list and if I was like, okay, restricted like things only matter in conjunction with other restricted things. So, that's the system they made. Yes. Like, are you looking for ghosts from Morpheus? No. Because that's the only thing I see in here. Like, oh no, you don't have ghost form with your stealth modes? Surely that wasn't it. Ghost form <laughs> United Action, because those are the other Worlds Collide ca cards we're talking about. Ghost form being on this list doesn't do anything. Yep. It doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. and, and might as well not be there. I will say, I mean, I understand what the restricted list is set up for. Um, I think that it is confusing to people who are not consistently playing because like Stealth Mode, Scrambler Storm, and Control the Week, you can have them in your deck and I can have as many Control the Week as I want, but I can't have anything else. Again, this makes sense right. to me, but there are but when people see any of these, it is confusing to some newer players. So I think that we want to be a little bit clear. Um, Wookie, what did you think was missing from this list? I want to hear yours first. Um, I think that I think we're all on the same page, and I think that's I, I think be funny. seeing stealth mode, scrambler storm, control of the week, like that actually was part of the limit for Martian generosity and key abduction. We have MG on there, but mm -hmm. frankly, no battle fleet. Well, but that's the whole point: battle fleet, key abduction. Battle fleet like, didn't matter if these are here because if if cool. you're limiting like the ability to stop stuff like battle fleet, the battle fleet becomes less of a big deal. What I see now, like, like, so there are two decks that did really well at KFC. They came in third and fourth, I think. Yep. Both had double MG and key abduction. Yep. And the primary way they were stopped was, like, other control, like Control the Weak and uh, Scrambler Storm in this case. Those are now restricted, so that means, like, those two decks just increased in alliance value, like, yes. twofold, like, by a lot. So my omission that I was surprised that is that we didn't see MG limit to one. That um, I agree with. But I also... So I'm, I'm really tore on MG and Key Abduction um, by putting them both on the list. The problem is Key Abduction by itself doesn't do anything. Like, it, it's not the yeah. issue. But the combination of both of them, there's nothing to really stop them outside of what was now added to the list. Stealth, stealth Mode, Scrambler Storm, and Control the Week. Like... Yeah. Like those yeah. are the stops, right? Correct. Yeah. And so I can be winning. I can have two keys and seven amber. You have no way to stop. And you just go ahead and can go off with MG into key abductions. Like GG, you won. And that's, that's, I feel like they're trying to add to this list so that the games become more interesting, more fun. And I, I feel that this goes against that. I really do. I don't I don't find it fun to go ahead and lose to hey great job you went ahead and were able to key abduct me and pull multiple keys. Um maybe I'm No, you're fine. I, I, I was actually a little surprised at that too, that MG wasn't limited to one, but Battlefleet not even being on the list kind of surprised me because Battlefleet's very similar. I know it takes a little more setup, but I mean there's still way less pods that have the correct that have the battle fleets. That You're correct. That. I mean, but it doesn't seem like they're taking. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't seem like they're taking pods into consideration here. That's true. Like, I mean, I, like, yeah, like I don't like know how goes form that on so. here. 
I don't think Ghost Form is actually doing anything. Just like I don't think Science Morpheus. Is I mean, doing if Ghost here. if Ghost Form is on here, why take off lateral, uh, shift. lateral shift? I I, yeah, I don't have again, an answer like, for I you don't on it. So think those two things being on this list affect anything. just just leave lateral shift. I mean, again, I don't know how many decks exist with multiple Ghost Forms or multiple lateral shifts. Um, I can't imagine it's many. And I can't imagine it matters too much, but no. E- even to find how many decks have two anomalies in them, um, then That's, you'd have to have I two anomalies that are good. Rare, and right? there. It is. Um, well, let's go find out. Do search. Yeah, I mean, lateral this shift. All right, lateral shift, and we'll go two plus, and we'll just find out how many decks exist. One. <laughs> so. I, at least on, on decks of Keyforge, there's one deck that contains two lateral shifts. The the Sick. peanut gal- gallery that is JM is commenting that he saw somewhere uh, people saying the restricted list is punishing Coda, which is true now, uh, which is the set that lapsed players have the most decks from. I mean, that's just true, period, right? Like, Coda sold more decks than every other set by a lot. I'm not going to go through the numbers. I'm sure JM actually has the numbers, but like, it is not even close when you talk about number of sales from Coda to any other set. And that is the set that is the punish the most in Alliance. Um, I'm not sure if that was intentional. I don't know what all went in the process of finding the Alliance restricted list. Because now all I'm I know looking... is that a, hat, like, a good chunk of the list doesn't mean anything. Well, and a and, good and... chunk of the list does mean Coda is weaker than it ever was. Yeah. And, and going ahead and looking at if you type into just DOK, both Lateral Shift and Ghost Form in the same deck, you have six. Of those six, there are only two of those decks that have both Lateral Shift and Ghost Form in the same pod to be able to take and both of those decks are not great we have a 65 sass here which is guess what world's glide brobnar and the other one falls in untamed but it's a 48 sass deck yeah i just looked up double ghost form there are five decks that contain double ghost form but like Um, that's still not what you do like it only matters in conjunction with the other cards on the restricted list correct You'd be looking for Ghost Form Plus Morpheus or Ghost Form Plus Stealth Mode it's or just Ghost too, Form Plus it's too small. United Action. And like none of the things I just named are win cons that I am even remotely aware of being a thing that I would care about to tech against Alliance. Hence, I don't know where any of these four things came, in, came from other than Stealth Mode. Stealth Mode makes sense. But then again, based on what I just said, I could argue Stealth Mode being on here doesn't do anything because there's not another card from the world's collide competitive pool that i am getting penalized by not playing like if i saw stealth mode plus infernus then you've affected a lot of potential decks in world's collide stealth mode plus eddie you've affected something stealth mode plus any of these cards doesn't matter at all right like that's how this list works Yes, because it's within. Set. So if you look at the only set that was truly affected, that's where you've got Control the Week, Library Access, Restring Guntus, and Scrambler Storm, and Time Traveler. That yeah, is five time cards traveler. that actually matter out of however many is on this list, all in the same set, set one. Maybe, yep. maybe it's because I don't truly care about. Alliance. I mean, I'm not highly invested in there. I think that it's fun to be able to theory craft and then put together some decks. Um, I just, I, I don't know what we're really looking at for bettering the gameplay. When I mean, right now, what is Alliance is where it usually is at uh, Martian Generosity shenanigans, right? I mean, that's still where it's at. Most of the time. So so my issue with Martian Generosity Key Abduction or Battlefleet Key Abduction is that you need to time it just right for your stealth modes, for your scrambler storms, for your control of the week to be able to hit. It's not even like, here's an artifact that just says, you can't go ahead and play. You're, you can't play your actions. Well, you can't have those in the same deck anymore. So 
I, I understand, but I'm saying if I had any of those, like that's the problem. If I, if I am playing, I can play stealth mode, but if it's not on the right turn when you're set to go ahead and go off with your Martian Generosity key abduction, if that's not for the final key, it's not the end of the world. I just played on the next turn. Right. And yes, I can go ahead and keep cycling, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't see that as where this, yeah. where the restricted list is set up and what it's trying to do. I mean, um, right now the entire restricted list is set up to well tell people to not, to not play Coda. Like that's what it yes. is. I guess, yes, I guess the biggest is. question is the restricted list is set up to make what not broken decks. That that's the whole idea, right? I mean, I think it is designed to move away from negative play experiences, right? But, like, I, I don't think... think it does that. I think we're still stuck um, in the same area we were before. The, the Morpheus, Dresden, and Guntus, those came together. To right, they did. Because there was... But, like, actually, like that had to be because of a specific pod. Because, like, people were talking about it immediately when they uh, heard about Alliance. Because, like... There's a X amount of Restoring Gundus decks, and there's plenty of decks that have double Morpheus. So, like, you can lock them out of the game automatic. Like, it's just going to happen. Um, so that's how that came, and I understand that. But after that, like, a lot of this stuff is... I, I don't know how it came to be. I just don't have an answer. I just don't know enough... About LA is already pretty an dark number vault. Okay, I guess I get. Um, didn't see a lot of that at KFC. Ghost form, don't understand. Library access was neutered enough. I don't know if they had found something, found a way to bust. I mean, LA United Action. I mean, LA originally being on there is one I agreed with because, like, it is yes. breakable L in Alliance because, like, you can just find ways to make it break. Well, Even it's, with it's it not LA, being repeatable, it's LA, and LA United, right? Be, yeah, That's you need it. You you need it coming in as a legacy card. I have an LA uh, United Action deck that's yeah. in. I, I have a pod that's there in um, DT, and I can pull it off very, 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 very consistently. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that out of ten games, I'm pulling it off easily nine games. Not a problem at all. And when it goes, there, there's nothing to stop me. I just keep playing and playing and playing and playing. And it does have the key cheat with key frog that's there as ways to be able to get rid of it. it. It, It's not a fun experience. So if that's what they're going for, I am all for it. Um, as I'm looking at this, did library card no. also get removed? No, it's not think, on here. But was that on, on the initial? It was never on there? I don't believe so. Okay. I was trying to go through. Library I card guess, is too slow. No, I, I agree. I, I just, for me, looking at this restricted list, I need to be able to see MG, key abduction, or like the combination. I don't know how with the restricted list set up that we're listing it as Battle Fleet, key abduction, or Martian Generosity, key abduction. But when we have multiples in a deck, it, I don't know. It, it just isn't fun to play against. Um, if you look, the other thing that I saw show up was auto encoder. Auto encoder with MM and your pips is another way to be able to go ahead and be able to cycle yeah, through and like, have your responses. Again, your it's like understanding the list, though. Like putting yeah. auto encoder on here doesn't do anything. No, it, it doesn't. Would, and that's it, the it problem. Would do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that is the exact problem. So. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you pair auto encoder with? <laughs> auto encoder and pips. Yeah. Not allowed to have pips in your deck. No. <laughs> well, even that, like you're discarding cards to get the value. Like it doesn't right. matter. Like there is nothing to pair. Like it's. I don't even know what you would put on this list that would actually like measurably affect MM. They put the dev there because yes, you could actually create decks with three devs, and yeah, that's a problem. That like, gets that's crazy. A thing. Um. So yeah, dev had to be there. So they did it. That's the one thing I knew of they could do for MM. It's there. Right. Like. I mean, I, about the only thing that would, f uh, like, affect MM to, like, a larger degree would be to put, like, I don't know, a certain number of Infernuses on here, which would affect Worlds Collide 2. Like, that would be about it, I guess. All you're allowed to play is Worlds Collide Brabner. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be 76 all 76-hour games. Yeah. Three, three house you can have Brabner. one house in your deck as long as it's World Clyde Brabner. 
It's just the longest game you've ever played. I guess not. I guess it's just who has still, more creatures and who's reaping faster. Still just, still just lose. I, just I mean, lose. I, I will say sheep is like screaming in my ear in the background saying, you've talked way too much about this restricted list and a format. That's... Probably, probably. <laughs> there well, are like when, when, when Arthur put up his poll, it was like 12% voted for Alliance. So, 12% of our 5,000 people want to play this. Well, I guess the question is, how do we make Alliance more balanced, but yet quick and fast? Because I, I think Alliance is designed, and I know JM said it was designed to bring back old players. Eh, is it? Like, oh, you can build decks now, kind of. Like, I don't know if, who that brings back. I think the idea was to take decks that people had and make because. Me and Sheep were having the talk the other day that literally you buy a box of Keyforge. So if I go buy a box of Magic or I go buy a box of Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, even if I get nothing for what I'm I'm personally looking for, I've probably gotten cards that I'm able to swap out. I'm or, you know trade with people. I'm a, I can go sell those cards to get the cards I need. There's still a lot of things I can do with the cards in that box. But with Keyforge, when I go buy a box, how many of those decks are going to be competitive? How many of those decks am I going to be able to take to a vault tour and do decent in? Maybe make a top eight. And the number we both came to was zero. A box of 12, yeah. Zero. Like a, bo a box of 12. You you have a very slim chance out of a box of 12 of being able to be like, oh, I can take, maybe you can take it to your local. You can take it to your local. You have a high probability of having right. one deck you can take to your local. That's fun. Uh, and I should like, say that we, is competitive. We always you... say that, JR, but is that true anymore? Think about who's at your local. It's these well, 5,000 the... players remaining from the 50,000 that we had that all have 600 decks. So, you're so that's telling me you're going to open a box of 12, go to the local of that, and play with the three people that has 500 decks and smoke them or well, like win? Out of one box. The the problem is is that our player pool is dwindling. It is very it, it's very very tight. Yeah, it is. Um, and I mean, so, our and player so pool seeing... is all on this show for crying out loud. Besides John, that that's our player pool right now in Wisconsin. Now I don't know what it is north. Now the hope is one day we will have yes. more players. But like right. right now, I actually disagree with that statement entirely. Like I used to be in that field because we used to have like eight to twelve every week and. Occasionally, there are people I didn't know, and like, you know, there's just variety. I didn't have the decks I had, like all that. Like all that was true back in the day. Like none of that is true now. Like if you see a person at Keyforge, most likely they're the grinder, just like the five of us, and they're going to have three to a hundred to a thousand decks. And if I open a box of twelve, I am in pool one, the best one out of that box. Sit down at the table. I'm probably gonna get crushed. Yeah. Well, but that's a real issue as we try and get back to OP. That's another topic to, for if another we're day. Trying to build, yeah, if we're trying to build our player pool and Right, it it is a problem and it is it is something if you guys look at our, our little, little internal if you look at the the sheet of uh of ideas I had for for future shows is is Keyforge uh, competitively anemic and we'll go through that another day. Um right now Going through more rules changes. I don't know why you put this on there, uh, JR. Choosing a house must now announce the house. Yeah. It, Didn't we have to do that before? Well, we had to, but technically you could also... I've seen this at many vault tours. I play my first card. And my first card actually announces what I'm playing. Now, Even before you were supposed to announce you were your house. Supposed you were supposed to. to. practice. You were supposed to. But here, now you must announce your house. Yep. Was that not in the rules before? Or was it just suggested? I don't, I don't know it, if it, it had it the word suggested. must there, yeah. but it was there. I just hear a lot of judge calls in my head already. Judge, you didn't tell me he was playing a card. He just Please a eliminate card? my player so I get a win. Um, the next I mean, one I do, uh, the next one I think is actually a really big impact. Yes, the next um, one is huge. So, and that is there's no need to memorize deck lists. You're making it larger. It's creeping me out. You said it's huge. It is, it, 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 huge. it, it is huge. Like it, it, it is because in the past we had two minutes to look at our deck, uh, our, our opponent's deck list, and which you, I oddly you still do. Like you still get yeah, the two you, minutes. You still get the two minutes. Um, but now 
you can go ahead and ask them for their discard pile at any time. We've always been able to do that. And hey, I just want to see your archon card. Your archon and it card. must be it must be visible at all times. Which does kind of go hand in hand that all matches are 45 minutes. That's something that they announced at KFC, which I think stuck. I didn't look for it in the rule book, but I believe it's stuck. Um, so you do have more time. I am still worried, though, because, like, I love them. But Hiram Graph is, like, slow play to the top notch. Um, <laughs> so, like... If wow, you didn't ball. you didn't even like you're throwing our just buses, our, our just small buses. anemic group of players. You're not even throwing me <laughs> under the bus anymore. Now we're picking on others. Oh, like goodness. I've seen you play in real life. You don't play that slow in real life. You just play that slow online. So I don't know what you've got on your second screen going on. Oh, wouldn't you like, like to know? <laughs> I don't want to know. It's Ewoks uh, and I mean, bikinis. You, I do play in a very, very small laptop, so Okay. And so it's all tabbing there all the time. Got it. Um yeah. but like like, if I'm at a main event where people are nervous, like, even the Draz X-Ray final in Kansas City, like, they were going really slow. And, like, there's reasons for that. Like, they don't want to miss triggers. They want to play their lines. Okay, I do all of that. I'm playing as best I can, and I'm I'm slowing down my pace. Now I'm going to add this, like, oh, I want to go through their discard, because I can do that. We'll say I can. I thumb through their entire discard. I'm doing counting for whatever I'm counting for. Then I look at their deck list, and I'm like, oh, wait, I put the deck list back. Can I see your discard again? Like, that shit is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Guarantee it. Oh, yeah. 100%. And you know well, where it's going to happen. It's going to happen in top eights. It's yes, not going to happen in gonna low happen, level It's going to happen, happen all everywhere. day. Round it's one, happen, two, yep. three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to happen. So it's so going like, pu- to push games to time. And frankly, we're going to go ahead and see people frustrated over it. Yeah. Because because at this point they have the the ability to do it. There isn't really a penalty for it unless it's being consistently done and at the end of the game, which is when you expect to wait, see it. Wait, wait, it. wait. Pause, pause, pause. Go ahead. You just said there wouldn't be a penalty for it unless it's consistently done. Is that true? Well, like, right let's, now let's that's think about that. Means. Well, was if there I'm a allowed rule? to do these two things per the rules. That, correct. You can't. Why be could like I not consistently do it through the whole game? Well, there is there is a ruling now for intent. Well, not really. Just I mean, you can get delivered a warning for intentional slow play. Okay, I he, agree with what you're saying, but what I just described per the rules is not intentional slow play. I, I understand using what the rule book says. I can do every turn. Um, but dra- but Draz and x-ray even at that final table in kansas city they were talked to in regards to uh, let's keep it going let's keep this pace yeah i agree with that they were talked to because i was there but i don't know why (laughs) i I agree i agree with it i thought that they were playing within their right i yeah to be honest i I would have played played slower in that yes i feel like both of them were doing exactly what they should be doing at that moment the whole game and was it a little slow Yes. Was it a slow inside of the rules if you really timed the seconds? No. It was it was fine. You just becomes more aware of how slow it is because you're all staring at them. And that is the only reason that it felt that way. Um, so yeah, I, I think games will go to time because of this. And we're just going to have to wait to see how whoever is running the event reacts to that. Because people are going to get upset about this. And people have at a very some point in time. It's well, again, happen. first, at first, we have to have organized playback. But well, when correct. that but happens, people have a very different threshold for this. I mean, you want yeah. to send people on tilt. How the speed of play is already something that oh, throws I, I many name, people on tilt. I can tell you like eight names of people that are very good at this game right now. If you did what I just said, even half of your turns, you're going to tilt them, and you might win just because of that. <laughs> like. Like every other turn, like, oh, can I see your discard pile? Can I see your deck list? Can I see your discard pile again? Okay, I'll play my turn now. Like they will tilt hard, fast, and you're going to win. But like, I'm not going to do that. I don't like I can actually memorize the deck list. Like I'll do that and I'll play my game. But like people are going to start losing their crap. People start doing that. I think the deck list being open allows for less in straight memorization. 
I do think it opens up some more shenanigans that can happen. And I do think that people are going to take advantage of it near the end of decks because you now know exactly what can be left in someone's hand. You know the cards that are there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I do agree that, that it's it's probably going to be a problem. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some more tournament rules addressed in the future after that happens a couple of times. I don't know. Like, I think, I mean, I know why it's added, and I actually agree wholeheartedly why the decklist review thing was added, because, like, I don't think they want memorization inside a two-minute window of 36 cards to be a barrier of entry to a competitive game. Mm -hmm. It's not to any others. Like that's just not a thing. Well, it's a little um, different in every other card game because you're you're talking about in this card game, you have thirty six cards, right? And it could be any thirty six. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a majority yeah, of yeah, cards. We, you yeah, we've already talked about that. Like you, you see more of our card pool than any other game. Right. Because in but, other games you don't see the niffle ape ever. Right. You're because like, nobody's nobody's playing that niffle ape ever, ever, ever. Because yeah. it's a dud. Yeah, you're never like, gonna see a, that. Right. So yeah. When you go to Magic and you're playing, is it Drake's, which is just a deck off the top of my head, you more or less, like you even said in Flesh and Blood, you're like, oh, you're playing that with that setup? I already know what's in your deck. Yeah, you look at their hero, you look at their equipment. If they have these cards, like they have these cards, if they don't, you already won anyway. So. Right. So, I mean, and a lot of games are like that. Like in Pokemon, if you're playing, you know, Mew Mewtwo, you already know what's in their deck. You already know what their end game is and how either you're going to stop it or you're not. Same thing with Magic. There's, you know, six or seven competitive decks. You know if they sit down and they come out blue-black right away, you're like, oh, okay, you're playing Demir such and such. You know, like, you just kind of know. So a little bit different in Keyforge because you're seeing a much more, you know, because there are dead cards in your deck most of the time. Yeah. So here, yeah. here's my question. I I'm fine with memories, like, decks being open. Uh, this should be, in my opinion, store level. This should be more casual. Like, when we get to Vault Tour, is this still something that is needed? Yeah, <laughs> See, that's where, like, I, I think the answer is ultimately yes. I don't know how to police it. I don't have a suggestion for them, but I know it's going to be a problem. But, like, this isn't a hurdle that other competitive games have to play with. So, like, this is my role now at the school I work at. Like, I, I literally work with people with disabilities like students every day like that is my job that's my entire job mm -hmm. so like if we don't have something like this there that does eliminate which is a growing like percentage of our population at least in the states i don't know about anywhere else so like where there is no like effective way some of like a significant amount of people are going to ever get good at memorizing like that is just not something that they're going to be able to do so like removing that hurdle does allow more people to play competitively at a higher level like i okay. do really appreciate that part of this change i have no freaking clue what gg is going to do about what i just described well and let's well, talk about the we... next thing because the top game so the number one table after everything all is said is done is going to have no time limit now, I, I will say a whole bunch of people are up in arms and they're so worried about heart. As someone who has heart. Like, All right, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's walk this back one second. When you say a whole bunch of people, is this like Wookiee with his Discord server? No, people, no. Or is this uh, like a real whole bunch of people? I would not. Ar I mean, again, our statistical population is very, very <laughs> small. But I have heard it from multiple individuals. Uh, it has been brought up elsewhere as well um, in our community. So it's been more than just our Discord that there people are worried about heart. And my really big question is very, very simple. How many heart decks have made our top table? This is uh, not the concern. Let me Those, get my zero hands to count this. Zero. The answer zero. Is zero. And zero. That's before Reclaim by Nature became a thing. Like it's like zero even make Zero since that have made top anything anywhere, even like online, unless it's like a niche week where you're playing some SAS cap crap thing. Like that's the only time you ever see heart these days um, because Reclaimed by Nature just auto beats them. And it's a very common card in a very great set. So the, 
there are some very, very good heart decks. But the end result is, in order to make that top table, you have to win playing a standard game where it goes to time and all of the other matches. If you make it in a vault tour, you have to then on day two play your best of one, playing a standard fair game, going ahead and getting there, which tells me that if you can do that, Heart has to have the win con that's there. That means they can have the key cheats. They wow. have a way to be able to pull that win. Pump so the this is a little bit. This here. is not. This is not something that I am worried about. I, I don't but think I just, we should I worry. I want to say it for the community. Sure, I don't think you should worry about it. I agree. Um, but we haven't had somebody come to a high level event just to troll yet. I don't no. think this has happened. Like, and maybe it's because it's not big enough. Maybe it's because people don't want to waste their money just trolling. But, like, I mean, we haven't had that yet. I mean, you, you're, you're talking about in other games, such as, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, there was a guy who brought a deck that was, like, 1,076 cards. That might not be a correct number, but it was a massive deck. I think they called it, like, the Coffin or something like that. And literally, like, the way he was playing his games is he had a bunch of cards, basically every card that he could pack in there, that was able to be like shuffle your deck. So literally he would have to shuffle like over a thousand cards every single time and to properly shuffle a thousand cards you needed. like. And he did this just as a troll. I don't think we've seen that yet in Keyforge. No, we haven't seen any trolls like that. Not no, yet. They, I'm they, working they, on they, it. Our trolls stay on the forums. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but you know. But, but I'm telling you, you have, you with Keyforge, you don't have all of the tools to bring it in. You you have heart. Like you, right. that's what what you're talking about for that deck is that it has cards that allow them to be able to shuffle. So right. you have a very, very small percentage of decks that are gonna have heart and be able to continue to do something goofy like that. Like you have to win out the other games. I just I don't see it. I don't see it as a concern, and I don't think that we should worry about it at all. Was heart something that probably shouldn't have been produced? Sure. But it's here. I don't see it as playing any burn bit them. in our top eight for Alliance or Archon. I'm not. Don't about burn it. them. Send them to Wookie. No, burn send them. me your heart burn decks. Them. All your heart decks. Because I'm sure there is a double heart deck now. Yes, a good deck's more than likely going to rotate back, so you're able to get your in Alliance, by you can have three back. Three hearts. This is true. You could but technically have more if you can find. There's <laughs> no double heart deck. You, you could have three though, but again, uh, going well, ahead. Hold and... on, there's there's a triple heart deck. It's forty eight sass. No, it's it's an isolated card. It, it, what? It's it's an yeah, there, isolated. I'm, yeah. No, it's not Go an ahead. isolated card. There's. A, I'm looking at a triple heart of the forest deck right now on DOK. Really? Abelson, Technospur, Empiricist. It's forty eight sass. Now I don't I know. Is not aware. Now I don't know if heart um and maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't oh wow that is the stupidest thing i i, I don't no know if you're able to then like can heart uh can it become a maverick yes it can become a maverick i mean i guess they do say any card can become a maverick but looking at this deck this deck has no <laughs> sure it has it has no win con and frankly but I'm if I'm going worried. in alliance, I could I could technically have four hearts. It doesn't matter though, Wookie. And, and this is the thing: I was looking at bringing my good heart deck to ABR our first week. I couldn't do it because ABR is fun, and it just it wasn't fun from what was there. So I'd played it in previous years. I just I brought a different deck because I wanted to be a good sport, and that's what it should be right now. With heart, though, we have tools. Not only do you have Reclaimed by Nature, and other artifact destruction. But we also have ways with Exalted Amber to be able to send Amber to force the person to be able to go above their key limit. But you're, as, you're not thinking, you're thinking as a rational player. But I'm saying yeah. like that, but there no, are no, no, more no. Tools, I understand. I totally understand what you're saying, but you are thinking up. about as a rational player. Think about all the things I can do right now, right? If I have four hearts, so let's say I buy this triple heart deck and then I Ooh, find God. two hearts, I, I find two other 
um, decent pods that also have Heart of the Forest in them, maybe ones in Shadows that also includes like a Key of Darkness or something like that. Something crazy. Technically, I can have five, oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, yeah, five hearts in my deck. Five And it them. does, and it right. does nothing but now when I give I you Amber. To, I'm not, you're thinking about this all wrong. You are not, there is no troll in you whatsoever, Right. Now really? I can not only extend the game, because remember, this game only lasts for 45 minutes, so every turn I'm allowed to look at your discard pile, then look at your <laughs> deck list, then look at your discard pile, and then maybe look at your deck list one more time, and then take my turn, drawing every single game I play to a draw where it comes down to what Ember is in the pool. I can do this. You were thinking about this just playing straight up and my thing just crashed hold on one second guys i guess uh i guess my discord just crashed honey checking for updates here we go i'm still recording here I, my but my discord just crashed okay I have, well I, i'm back we i'm back i'm back all right can you hear um, me? but like what you just described though yeah i can hear you can you hear me okay yes. yeah for, i can hear you what but you just described turn. actually is the definition of of cheating and slow play which yes. is it and i'm, I'm call all, over but, but, but like but like you said i'm judge. only i'm only operating in the rules to which i am allowed but again in this yeah, manner but that's the thing like the judge oh i am literally coming in and out all right we're gonna go on to the we're going to go into the Discord app on um, thing. Because I am in and out for whatever reason. Discord does not want to play nice with me today. Sorry, guys. Um, there we go. It's coming back up now. It's JR is a great player. Very possible. He starts to get nervous about it, so he slows himself down. And then he does start to do that, like by turn four, a lot of cards have been played. He starts look. He looks at the discard pile. He looks at the deck list. He plays his turn. He is progressing towards a win con and actively trying to win the game. Time runs out. He does that every time for the rest of the turn, like all rounds five through time running out. He, in that scenario, would not be considered slow playing. He was progressing towards the win con, yet his opponent could have been pissed off the entire time, beyond reason. Sorry, yeah. Discord kept killing on me, I don't, and I'm not sure why. But again, like, but what I'm saying is I, I, I am progressing to my end game, but I am making sure that I am taking in all the information that is uh, that is allotted to But you're to not. Me. Like you said but in I your am. statement, you're doing that to go to a draw. But you I don't say that. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh. But that, uh, that's the judge has to make that determination. Right, like, that would be a judge the, determination. Those rules before. And, mm -hmm. and in that case, that person is actually cheating. But, so, like, but again, that's not what I was talking about. We have not seen anybody actually do that. But no, nobody and says my end game has to be the same as your end game. The judge uh, does. The yeah. judge does. The end game cannot be to go to a draw. That is not the goal. I'm not. I'm not looking to go to a draw, but I'm looking to take this to a 12 round fight. It doesn't say I can't do that. You are enjoying every moment. Of I am Key enjoying Forge. every moment of Key Forge and my opponent's company that I am able to. I think that you can get away with it for a game. I don't think that you're going to be able to. I do think it I could get time. away with it for an event. I don't and think they then they would probably no. change the rules. No, I, I think but, that you'll have a, a but the judge. Who I will think sit there you and would be to considered you. to be like in the current, our current the, judge staff, you would be considered to be slow playing game one. Yes. Uh, okay. I guess and that, even I guess if you make the... it through game one, then again you're going to be sitting down. They're gonna, they're the judges they will be that we hired for yes. live would have marked you as the plane and given you yes. a loss based on what you just described. Okay, yes. but we but talked let's, about it with them. But let's just but, say my deck. This is what my deck does. Like I have five, that is, does I nothing. Have, it plays I have five the hearts. Purse. You you didn't tell me I couldn't build a deck that can't have five hearts. Again, you can have five hearts, but right. you're missing the whole component. I, I can go ahead and get you. I can give you keys. If I am playing with How are you going to give me keys? Because I'm going to give you Amber. You have but to I have, I have I have heart turn. I, have, I, come, I come out heart before I, I... There's five of them. I'm going to find one it, before I forge my first key. It does not matter. I will go ahead and with my dinos... 
I can you're go talking ahead. About very specific. Yeah, case. but but the, but there but there are ways to be able to give Amber. Yes, to but your there opponent. are also a good chunk of decks that cannot do that. There and most are. of them I, are I cannot, not. I cannot argue like with mo- that. But like Jr. Like most decks cannot do that. But you have you have Dinos and you have Saurian and you have MM. Frankly, with all the capture pips, there's a lot running capture around. Capture does not give make them Amber Jr. The, the no. decks that he's referring to, he just discards everything until he plays a heart. He doesn't generate amber. Yeah, he he's not going. To, again, he yes, it, it's it's going this, to be a this, pain. It, it, Jr. There's no way around this. It's it's going to be a painful game, right? And every game I play against every opponent I play is going to be painful. There's no way around it, right? It's just to be clear. Not. To our audience, he's not actually talking about doing this, but like right. this is. The I mean, not not yet. I'm gonna start work on it after this show, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this but, is how Wookie makes it to Alliance, right? But I'm saying that it it's possible, right? Like there there are ways to break these rules, and we haven't had somebody who's come into the come into it trying to be a troll not until yet. they listen to you not until today. they hear this show and then there will immediately be a heart of the forest like you know what i hate alliance so much right wookie gave me the best idea yeah so i created sheep sitting down with his heart i created it, the format i'm now gonna break it so but again we can go ahead and we can go ahead and barehand it. You can go ahead. What's the dis artifact? Eaton's jar, where you can't play it. Them. Eaton's jar. So there you go. Eaton's jar. Don can't play it. Like he there plays are a turn one a good chunk of the time. Jr. At five. At five, yeah. Again, a good chunk it, I find he has a one. very very high probability. But again, do you think that you're only going to have Eaton's jar in your deck? You have no like these are again niche scenario. Look, I don't Jam's see already it building it for me. I don't even yeah, need I, it. Jam's already got it half just, built. I just don't see it as the deck that's not our community that's not what i'm worried about no show up no, show up I, I bring do, it and I do not i'm gonna laugh have... i'm gonna laugh at you when you go ahead and have a five heart deck and it's you're gonna lose not gonna to someone else playing no one's going to do this i'm just matter. going to have my fun don't say no one i'm a little crazy um it's all right let's move, let's move Never on from this see it. um house geistoid didn't we talk about this already i don't know what this means no uh, okay so in uh, the two-player Learn to Play, on page 21, they go into House Geistoid. We know that that's the new house that's coming out for Grim Reminders, but it gave a little bit of a, a blurb. So I can go ahead and read it for our amazing audience. And it says, The scourge of the Geistoids has spread throughout the Crucible, seeking to remake the world in their own image. Each Geistoid minion is a fusion of discarded refuse. So we see discard. Animated by psychic energy of Amber and driven to wreak revengeance on the neglectful universe. Every scap of detritus cast aside by the living is a potential new minion to swell their ranks. We got some nice photos. And then it says exactly how the Geistoids came into being is much debated, especially within the Society of Logic and Reason, a group that has a special disdain for these ghostly constructs some claim demonic origins leading to speculation about ties to dis while others insist it was an ill-conceived experiment gone rampant so i don't know i I like to see the lore that's built in i think that it's fun um so there you go a little bit of reading for us today house geistoids uh timing chart was our other one that was showing up. There wasn't much that was here, but you have a new components put in step three, which is your play, discard, or use cards. And for play, um, there are now four sections for playing card. One, if your card is a creature, artifact, or upgrade, add it to your play area, resolving any enters play effects. If your card is an action, reveal it. Two, resolve each bonus icon on the played card, top to bottom. And here's the new one. Three, resolve play effects, after play effects, and after enters play effects. Four, if your card is an action, place it in your discard pile. So they did put in play effects, so we know where it is now. Um, All right. Uh, We did get a new timing chart. I think we go through this on another day. What do you guys say? I mean, there's not much new there, but yeah. Not, Not much new, but we can go through. I mean, nothing crazy, but... I just can cover it after the OP news next week. That's right. We can go because that's when it'll be most important. 
What, was there more than what I just went through there? For the timing chart? Yeah. No. Probably not. Uh, well, I mean, that was more looking at cards. You can't leave. You're no longer able to. When creating a token, look at put it face, look at it, and then place it. You got to place it, and then you're able to well, look. Yeah, at that it. that's that's not the timing chart. I read the timing chart for woe cards. Yes, they they put in the rule that basically you the order of how to do it is that you will draw your face down card for woe, and you pick your flank, and you don't get a chance to see it until after it's it is in placed. Place. Yeah, mm. minor impact, but Interesting. it is there. It yeah, does do something. Yeah, it does. All right, we'll go through flowchart on another week. Um, we got some ideas for for what's coming up, depending on uh, what's going on. I guess we'll we'll just we'll patiently wait for that OP news, which will probably come out tomorrow, because that's how things go. Um, and uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. You guys have anything to get through before we get out of here, and I start building my five heart deck. Burn the heart. That's my final words. Mm-hmm. Final, final thoughts. Jerry Springer did pass today. Moment of silence. Moment of silence for Jerry Springer. All right. Well, if nobody's got anything else, we'll see y'all next week. May the forge be with you. This rebellion, we are aliens, we are not a crime.